What's up nature lovers? Today we're going to be talking about six somewhat random house plants from my collection today. All of these I got from work um, throughout the year and a half that I've been with the company I work for. So let's get started. If you're new to my channel, my name is Kayla and I talk about caring for house plants, learning and exploring about native plants and appreciating medicinal plants. So if any of those topics are of interest to you, please consider subscribing. I really want to try and connect um, houseplant lovers to the nature that we try to surround ourselves with inside our homes. First I'll highlight this beautiful plant right here. She needs a bit of pruning because she's getting a little long. I love her so much that I don't want to cut her. But it's, um, it's a variegated Kalanchoe, I'm pretty sure. Um, I've never seen anything like it in a store with a label on it. So if anybody has any idea, that would be great. I'll try to look online a little bit more um, intensely before, uh, before releasing this. But she likes a decent amount of light since the variegation. But nothing too harsh. Um, I would think that her leaves would burn. And she's definitely a she because she gets like some pink in there. She's a little spicy. I'm just kidding. But um, the way I know when to water her is I feel the leaves. And I actually think right now is probably a good time to, to water her. She, the leaves get almost, they get flimsy and almost, almost kind of like a tacky feeling. It's a little hard to describe. But they're softer, they're not so, so stiff and waxy, I guess. So the, the cuticle gets a little less waxy feeling. She is in... That's a good question. She probably could use a repotting, to be honest. Um, there's probably wet, regular potting mix in there, some additional perlite. Um, I think I'd also maybe add some sand in there next time I repot her. Um, so something airy and fast draining is best for this plant. I also have her inside of this terracotta pot to also help prevent from overwatering. I haven't had too many issues with this plant other than it just getting um, long and kind of weak and uh, top heavy so that the vines start growing in this kind of U-shaped pattern. And she I, she's, has been susceptible to my, from my thrips outbreak and I did spot a couple mealy bugs just now while I was kind of inspecting the plant. So um, I will treat her with more systemic insecticide. Other than that, um, she does grow these wet, all white pieces and I'm not entirely sure that they would be very sustainable long term. So I'll probably have to cut them off eventually. Next is this somewhat traditionally a very pretty plant. But I spotted spider mites on this a couple months ago and decided to clean with some product that I've never used before that's very heavily oil based. And it was nighttime, but even the next day, the leaves still burned, and that's why some of these are crispy. So I wouldn't recommend using oil. But I am seeing some new growth here. So I think there's, um, I counted three new, new growth points on this plant. Oh, I haven't mentioned what it is. This is a Calathea macoyana, which I probably wouldn't have necessarily bought, but I did get it for free from work. Um, it was in some living walls of mine, but some of them had mealy bugs, so I ended up just swapping all of them out just to be on the safe side. So this one I have also treated with systemic insecticide over time, just to combat anything that might have been on there. Um, spider mites are not susceptible to in the systemic insecticide that I use, so that one does have to be removed mechanically or with spraying with water or a rubbing alcohol and um, soap solution or with neem oil. So, and again with oil, it is pot potentially going to burn the leaves when you have sunlight or a grow light on. So you have to be very mindful of that. This plant is probably, I don't know, eight feet underneath the grow light. So these tend to not like a whole lot of light. If you ever go to a botanical garden and see these, they're usually, they're always on the um, understory of the plants. 
This piling mix is probably pretty straightforward. I think maybe I added an, a little bit of additional perlite in there. For the most part, since I, I am an underwaterer, I didn't want to leave this plant out to dry with my normal airy potting mix. So that so I potted it with maybe less perlite than I usually add, and then I put it in a plastic container that is the color of terracotta, because I do feel like terracotta is kind of like my thing, my color that I gravitate towards to. If you ever see my other videos, I'm just surrounded by a terracotta color behind me. But yeah, so plastic will help retain moisture so I don't have to water this too often. And this can go up to two weeks without me having to water it. it seems to be doing okay. And as I've mentioned before, um, with spider mites, they, they can be prone to spider mites and you'll see those on the undersides of the leaves. What kind of caught my eye was um, they almost secrete I don't know if it's the plant that does it or if, I don't think the spider mites do it. So I think it's the plant that kind of excretes almost like um, little little juices, little sticky sap sort of type thing um, on the undersides of the leaves when there's something going on with it. Um, I have had mealybug issues in general on calatheas. And so that's something, calatheas and marantas. I haven't seen any thrips. I have. I don't think I've come across. I'm trying to remember in my past collection of calatheas. This one doesn't have clay uh, thrips. As I potentially see a thrip right there. No, that's dirt. Thrips look like dirt, so that kind of sucks. <laughs> Anyways, just keep an eye on your plants. Another plant that I tend to get pretty frequently are these Acmea fasciata. I think that's right. Acmea, Acmea, Acmea fasciata. <laughs> the silver vase bromeliad. If you've ever seen these in garden centers, they have like super hot pink. Is that hot pink or kind of baby pink? It's like a combination of baby pink with some hot pink, like spiky flower coming out of here. And so I get these on rotation. Um, every few months I get a fresh batch where they have the blooms on them. And then I take out the old ones that don't have blooms, but they tend to have pups. I like to rehome them usually. I have actually a video of me cleaning up a batch of these silver vase bromeliads from a couple months ago. Um, I can link that above. I decided I, uh, to keep this one because it, it's in pretty good condition still. And... I don't know. We'll see over time. I might like it more as the babies continue to grow and the mother dies off. I don't give this a ton of light right now. Um, they probably would like an east-facing window best. Um, right now it's kind of just in the ambient light of this this room right now. It sits normally like right next to me here. So it gets ambient indirect light from the window in the evening and then the light from the big girl light and sometimes this light is pointed this direction. And my feet's fallen asleep because I decided to do this on the ground today. I don't know if I'll end up repotting this. If I were, I would probably keep it in a mossy mixture with some orchid bark in there because they are epiphytes. Um, but this is probably fine for a while. I just need something that's gonna, a cash po that will stabilize it better because it is super top heavy. I water it. Sometimes I, I alternate between watering the soil and watering inside the tanks. Um, I think if I had better airflow in this room, like if the air was going more frequently, I would be more willing to keep water in the tank. Um, I think there's a risk that you can, um, a bacterial infection would occur if the air isn't moving around the plant when there's water inside of the plant. So I, that's why I alternate between watering the soil, which looks like just a lot of peat moss, Issues, like I said, it can be uh, over water pretty easily. Like I've had them where they get really wrinkly and there's just, I don't think there's any coming back from it. And I don't, I think maybe that's from the water sitting in the tank for too long. And as the babies get older, I'll put more water inside their tanks. Yeah, so that is Acmea fasciata. Okay, before I break something, let me do this one, because this one's super cute. So 
So like, woo. Uh, this is Aristalo, Aristata, Aristalo, Ar Aristata, Aristata, Aristata. Aristalo, Aristata. It used to be an aloe. <laughs> And this one looks a little different than pictures online just because like the light is coming from a different direction and it's always kind of grown very long and a little wonky. Um, but this one I give pretty decent light-ish now I think about it. It's like three, four feet from the grow light, three feet, so it should probably actually be a little bit closer if I want it to be more compact and darker green probably too, I would think. I do feel like it's stretching. So I should pay more mind to that as well. But I tend to, I try, you know, try to give it some good, decently strong light. This mix looks like it's predominantly potting mix. I might see some sand in there. I see, okay, so I probably put some bonsai mix in there as well because I see a little lava stone and a lot of perlite. And then it's inside of a terracotta as well so it can wick out the moisture. I water it when the leaves get a little softer so i probably water it maybe like once a month i go through it does get like brown dried leaves towards the bottom of the base and stuff so i just it's super satisfying to just kind of pluck them out and i did that before starting on most of it so let's see if i can find one here we go you just whoop, pop pop it out it's very nice Otherwise, I don't think I've really had any issues with it. I mean, if the fact that I forget about it means anything, that's probably a good thing. That means it's very easy, low maintenance. Just give it good light. Give it better light than I'm giving it. And maybe turn it, too, because you can see it's, it's kind of reaching that way for some reason. That must be where the light is. I, I try to remember to rotate it as well. And then the next one I have to be... This one bites. I have shown this one in a previous video um, of a houseplant haul from some time ago. Uh, this one is from work as well. Uh, this is Aloe Maculata, which somebody helped me identify in that video, so thank you to that person. I've been very cautious about watering it, uh, but I do think it needs water soon. I know one of the babies popped off, so maybe I should just try to water that guy. But he's so thick and he bites. He's got these very spiky bits. So in terms of watering, what I'm kind of waiting for is the leaves to get just a little more thin and squishy, which just does start, it is starting to feel kind of like that. Not squishy, like mushy, not mushy, squishy. <laughs> Where it's just got a little bit of give to it. It's not super hard and stiff. So it does feel like this needs water. Um, it might be getting a little too much light. I mean, this guy, he's the one that popped off, and I'm trying to just root back in there. Um, but this one's getting kind of purple, so that's telling me that... Sorry. So it's telling me that uh, it's getting too much light. Potentially. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, it's just called, it's called sun stress. But um, just something to be mindful of. And so it's in, uh, looks like, potting mix, regular potting mix with added perlite and added bonsai mix. And then again, a terracotta to help prevent overwatering. And it, that's because it wicks out moisture. And that's why you'll get like all these like spots and stuff that's from um, depo mineral deposits over time. I haven't had any issues yet with this guy, so keep your fingers crossed for that. And finally, I'll end with something just super cute, which I still need to repot. Shame on me. But I'd probably keep to the same sort of succulent mix. Right, this is a Pacophytum oviferum. Oviferum. That probably sounds better. Pacophytum oviferum. Uh, moonstones. Super cute, a little cutie. He, he's uh, bending over here. Can, they're so top heavy. I mean, this thing is like, I mean, it's heavy. So he's he's getting pretty rooted in there. A little bit of cracking there, but I'm sure it'll just kind of callous over and strengthen over time. I mean, if you see these at botanical gardens or anything similar to it, they have like these long necks that just kind of 
crawl and wind around and then like a tuft of leaves towards the end. So this is this is not unusual to see. And then you'll start losing the leaves that are on the bottom towards the soil as well. And you know, you can see it's ready to root. It is gearing up to root. So this one is a little bit, is uh, still pretty easy to gauge when the water I just feel the leaves. I try not to uh, rub the leaves too much because you'll wipe off the glaucous lining, the waxy coating that gives it kind of that bluish tint. And when you rub it, it gets like shiny and slightly more green underneath. It's very characteristic of plants like this. And so if you do that, then you lose that characteristic. I don't think in, in, in our environment, indoors, it probably doesn't affect the plant too much, but it is there to protect the plant from sunlight and potentially also from water loss so it might help with water retention as well but yeah so i feel the leaves and if they're squishy slightly wrinkly maybe not quite the new ones and not quite the oldest ones because the oldest ones tend to be more wrinkly usually so i i feel kind of like the mature but not super mature leaves to feel if they are soft and, and malleable versus hard and stiff same with the other succulents and, and how I treat my succulents generally as well. It is, because of this waxy coating, I, I have it right underneath the grow lights. So I think about a foot from the grow light up there. So other than that, it's doing pretty well. Other than this peat moss heavy soil, it's doing pretty well. All right, thanks for watching and have a good one. Yes, first we'll start with my most... Shit. <laughs> I just knocked off. I knocked something off. Well, I knocked off an old thing, so it's fine. <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs>